I didn't do that. Um, so the filters are here to help you stay organized in your system. Um, it really helps to take the guesswork out of who to call and it'll stay, keep you on top of leads in your system, essentially preventing leads from slipping through the cracks. Okay, so these ones here, many of you may be familiar with, these are essentially for your new leads. So your uh, ones that you haven't called, the ones that you need to keep calling because you haven't yet got them on the phone, uh, the ones that you've made contact with um, that have been active that you have not put them into a, a a category here and then the ones that you may have called them at least eight times but still haven't made a connection with them um, so with the check-in one so when you have somebody that you've made contact with so with your make contact filter you should see and if you don't see we can definitely add it in for you is the tag option and then does not have the selective tags and then you have the check-ins so on each of you leads, so I'm just gonna click on this plus sign here in your tag list, you should, these are duplicated, just disregard the fact that they're duplicated, yours should not be duplicated. Um, you should see check-in tags, okay? Um, so weekly, bi-weekly, quarterly, sorry, monthly, quarterly, six months, you could even add an annual check-in as well. So the goal is really when we have a conversation with someone and we're discovering where they're at in the process and learning more about their situation, uh, whether we're asking them directly as to where, how often we should, they would want us to follow up or when should we follow up again, or we're just taking that based on their timelines. All right, so based on their timelines, what you feel like is appropriate as far as checking in again. If you're asking them and they're telling you, yeah, you know what, give me a call in six months. Um, I would put them on a quarterly check-in because often people will tell you the time they want to be moved in by, not when you should be calling them by. So sometimes you'll call it six months and they've already moved or they're already out looking with another agent. Okay, so it's putting a check-in tag on them. So ultimately in this list, you want it, your goal is to kind of get it down to zero because we want to be throwing a check-in tag on everyone and to get them off this list so they fall into your follow-up list, okay? Um, now you can use different methods, of course. Uh, some people strictly rely on the tags. Um, I would always tag them anyway, just as a secondary reminder. Uh, and then some use the tasks in connection. So some use both, they, they refer to tasks for the check-ins, not the filters, um, and some rely on the filters. It really comes down to what's gonna be the best for you. Now, once you throw a check-in tag on a lead, so again, based on the conversation, they're gonna fall into now their check-in list. So the check-ins are really straightforward. So basically, if they have this tag and they haven't been contacted, in this case, the weekly check-in in the last seven days, um, they're gonna fall into this list, okay? So then you're calling them or texting them in this specific one. So the minute you call them, even if you leave a voice message, just checking in, making sure things are good or following up with a text, they're gonna fall off this list and automatically reappear here in seven days. Um, and same with the, like, so the 14, so the two week one, that's gonna be every 14 days. So if I call this person, they'll fall off, reappear in 14 days. Now, your goal, of course, is to keep all of these empty every single day. That's the ultimate goal. Like staying on top of that, you'll be laughing, okay? If you have everything in here and you're following up, you will gain the conversions. You'll be hitting uh, the one and a half percent because you're doing way more calls than the average realtor who's only usually making one to two calls on a lead, okay? So if you're following up, people will recognize that and not everyone, but a lot of people will value that. They'll see your efforts that you're putting into it and you're not even under contract with them or anything like that, right? So they start to see how you're working for them without actually being hired by them yet. Uh, so some people really value that. And of course they end up moving forward with you. Um, and then of course, you know, there's the others that uh, really could care less. It's, it's all about them and they, they really don't care, right? There's definitely those types of personalities out there. Um, so, where this can get tricky, okay, is again, it's when you're also applying it and you start to use it and then it starts to make more sense. So if we have somebody on a monthly check-in, let's say, 
and we have somebody in this list and let's say I just called Crystal and Crystal didn't answer. Um, I left a voice message, but you know, I feel like I really need to talk to Crystal. I don't want to just wait another 30 days before she pops into this list again for me to call. So what you can actually do, and let me see if I've got somebody in a quarterly. No. So what you can actually do is double up on your tags. Okay. So if you double up on your tags, you can double up on tags or tasks. Okay. Again, there's two different approaches. You can have let's say in this case, a one week check in in addition to that quarterly. So in this case, this week keeps popping into the one week check in until I get her on the phone. And then once I get her on the phone, I'm going to remove this tag and I might have to move this tag because now maybe she she's into the monthly check in. That's how she's progressed. So it becomes habit. Right. It's just knowing that when you're talking to them, we need to check the tags. Do I need to move any of these tags. So that's one way of doing it is piggybacking your tags so that this person keeps showing up in your weekly check-in every single week. And then you have your conversation with them. You remove that, adjust and save. The other would be to just keep the quarterly or the monthly or the, the six month on them and task yourself, right? So you task yourself, follow up, re what have you. When you have your tasks here, you can push your tasks. So let's say we called her um, in seven days and in seven days she still didn't answer I'm then going to push this task and then push it for another seven days right so and then you do it that way so you have a couple different options as to how that would work um, yeah so Alina yes you do want to put tags so you can pull them yeah so they need to have the the check-in tags on them in order for those those filters to work or if you have a different it doesn't these are just the ones that we created uh, so it's if you have something else that's already in there that simulates the you know the same kind of concept or idea uh, then absolutely you can just uh, use that but yes it's it's basically utilizing those um, there's one, there's one client, I can't remember who it was. Um, he's doing this and he's, he's contemplating increasing his spend. He's spending a, a decent amount for a solo agent and his, his call lists are empty every single day uh, because he's just stayed on top of it. He doesn't have to spend a lot of time. It's just going through each one of your filters daily and doing your best to clear it out. So you're going through number one, making sure it's cleared out, going out number two, clearing it out number three, trying to contact them or getting more information. Um, so we know what those timelines are or asking when we should follow up so we can put a check and tag on them. If you have anyone in number four, you're clearing that out. And then of course you're going through all your check-ins uh, to be able to do that. Now you do have, some of you will also see an email only list as well. So these are the leads where we can't call them. They've got a bad phone number or they've opted out of like, don't call me kind of thing. Um, you know that all you could do is email these people, right? So whether you want to send them or add them to drips, things like that, to try to connect with them um, via email instead. Um, so Alina is saying this automatically move them into the list every 30 days, let's say as long as the tag is there on the name and you should clear them out, got it, yes. That's exactly it. <laughs> it's exactly it. Um, but the, yeah, the individual that does this, I, we were in his system the other day and he's already, he's gonna be hitting a 2% conversion rate this year. Um, not to say everyone's results are gonna be identical to that. Uh, a lot of it depends on yourself, your personality, how you talk to people, of course. Um, and I have not listened to any of his calls, so I don't know what that, that actually sounds like, uh, but uh, he's definitely, it's definitely working. It's definitely being effective for him. And, you know, we've all done it where we're supposed to follow up with someone. We dropped the ball. We didn't do it. We finally called them back and they've already moved, right? Or they've already bought something different. Like on my side with agent locator when I was in sales, you, you didn't do your follow-up. Uh, they went with someone else right? You, you kind of left top of mind. You didn't give them a reason back again to come use you. Um, it's the same idea. Um, and again, this is where a lot of your competition is going to fail at. They're going to fail at the follow-ups. I can promise you that. Uh, and as long as you're there and you're checking in and you're making sure things are good, um, you, you'll have, really have nothing to lose. Um, can you go over the phone validity and email validity again and how to try to generate their email or number if we have one and not the other? Yes, I can. 
So basically, so with the email, so the phone validity, um, basically with the phone validity, it's tricky, right? So if somebody gives you a number that is invalid, right? But really the only way to identify where the area error, the error is in that phone number is generally if it's in the area code. Um, it's, otherwise, it can be quite difficult to figure out where the other, you know, where the error would be. Um, so your best bet is to just mark the phone number as invalid. Okay, so when you mark this phone number as being invalid, the system, if you guys have Twilio, is going to prevent that lead from accessing the listings that you're emailing them. They're going to try to view them, but the system is going to block them. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to go look at this listing and it's going to stop me from looking at this listing. So here you're going to be able to see that I have to provide a new phone number. But in addition to that, I'm going to also receive a verification code. So the lead itself, they can try to give you another fake phone number if that was their initial intention, which a lot of the times it's not. It's, it's we're all in a fast-paced world these days. Um, but if they try to give you another fake number, it's not going to work because they're not going to receive the four-digit PIN that they're going to have to then put into this website. So you end up turning some of those bad numbers into good numbers uh, just by doing that. Uh, with the emails uh, here, so if the email is invalid, so this mark this as invalid, and you come here if it's invalid, um, what you can do is, again, sometimes you can spot the error, right? I've seen people spell their names incorrectly, mixing letters up, things like that. If you spot the, the error, you can just click the little edit option. Make your edit. So wherever it is, I'll just add another Z to this so you can see. You just click anywhere. Oh, come on. This. Why is it not doing it? But generally, you just click somewhere outside. There we go. Um, anywhere outside the box, and it's going to prompt the save. I'm just going to make it back to making sure it works. Um, and then once you make that edit, you can click on this option here. So if you hover over, it's giving you that little uh, description of what this is going to do. So if I click on that one here and go to the email, you're going to see that this that it was just sent. So that's the activation email, so the initial email that they would have received when they signed up. Uh, it resends it out to them. So then you could see if I refresh here when this delivers, we'll wait for it to deliver. When it does deliver, this email is gonna then move to valid, right? If it bounces back, then you know that, okay, your edit still didn't result in a valid email. I've got a bad, bad email address um, and so on. If you have bad and bad, that's when you're gonna move them into your archive, right? The archive just strips them away from your screen. The last. Um, does that make, Perfect. So you so does that so you're saying Elena, you have leads put the four digit pin and the number still doesn't work. Why? But does the, the four digit pin deliver? You'll see the poor the four digit pin go out and it might deliver to a destination. It's just the recipient of that number, because it could still be a legitimate phone number, it just doesn't belong to the person that's trying to get into the website, right? But generally, they have to then validate it. So as soon as they validate it, you'll come in and the number is going to be marked as valid at that point. And typically in the notes and call section, you would see what the call, the number was and what it changed to. And often enough, when you look at it, it's like one digit off, right? It's the, it's the number right next to the other number that sort of thing. So that's typically um, where where I see you know the most common. I don't feel like most people are intentionally giving you bad information. It's done by accident. Um, now, I noticed that somebody had their hand up and then put their hand down. So I don't know if somebody has a question. No, is that here? I'll allow you to talk, Alina. Thank you. Thank you for no the problem. explanation. I have a question. Actually, when it comes to validity, uh, you misunderstood my question a little bit. That's why it helps. Mm -hmm. me talk. So before we did the validity and everything else, uh, yeah. you had it on the um, 
on the filters. Oh, uh, okay. On the filters. And I guess you were talking about the campaign. Mm -hmm. So can we talk about that? If I have an email, but then I don't have their number or vice versa, if yeah. I have their number, which campaigns can we send, how we can send them so we don't sure. spend a lot of time on that? Sure. So the ones where you have their phone number, but no email, um, those individuals are going to be in your call list because you have a good number for them, right? So you're trying to get that phone number or that email once you get them on the phone. So it's just, you know, continuously calling them. Sometimes you will see there's a, a, a suppression on the email. I don't know if this one will do it. No. Sometimes you guys will see a note here that says there's a suppression. Okay, so if there's a suppression, it could mean, not always, but it could very well mean that that lead has marked an email previously that came from a CRM via agent locator as spam. Okay, so it potentially blocks our system from sending them information. Um, you can sometimes just click remove suppression, right? And it'll, it'll work and you'll send an email and boom, it delivers. Um, you can remove the suppression if it was applied 12 months or more, like longer ago. If the suppression occurred within the last 12 months, um, you will have to get support to do that. So if you, I had a conversation with a, a lady the other day, uh, she confirmed her email address because it said invalid. We tried to just simply remove, like it wouldn't allow us to remove the suppression. Um, I reached out to our support team. They removed the suppression. Emails are now going through. Okay, so it's, it's not necessarily because they marked your email as spam. It's just somebody they signned up on. They marked it as spam. Uh, and who, for who knows what reason, right? Um, because this lady was more than willing to, to talk and, and receive information. So it could have been just how they were receiving information or maybe the listings that they were getting before were completely uh, not what they were looking for. So they just marked it as spam for whatever reason. Now, if you have the bad uh, phone number, but good email address, that's when you can apply the bad number campaign in addition to those individuals. So in your e-campaigns, uh, you guys, if you, you can just search it, it's the, the bad number campaign. So for those ones, you just click on it and then you can assign it. Now the bad number campaign, essentially if we go over here, and there's gonna be a lot of them. So this is essentially a series of emails. Okay, so it's, oops, we think we got something wrong. Um, and it's really just trying to get that lead to provide you with a phone number. Um, and they might do it through email, right? We've had uh, several leads responding to these, these emails, uh, some of them giving phone numbers essentially and but asking not to be contacted on the number because they still want to see the listings but you know they're not interested in having those conversations just yet um some people will respond with their number as well as more information about what they might be looking for uh so that it can be effective it's obviously not going to be effective on every single lead that you apply it to uh, but in addition to them wanting to view the listings this is also something that um, could help gain you a valid form of additional communication for your leads. Um, there is not one that is a text campaign for leads that have bad email addresses. There is not one uh, because they can still, well, they can't get the listings and they do get a text verifying their email. But again, some people just don't respond um, to, to the SMS. So I hope. Yeah, uh, good question while we're still there. So if the first email, they respond to the oops uh, email saying, mm -hmm. oh, we got the wrong number, exactly what you showed. And they respond to that. So it will automatically stop because they responded, right? If they one... will, yeah. If So there's two ways to configure that, okay? So if somebody replies to an email, and this is also going to go with your pipeline settings, okay? So if they respond to an email, by default, for, for everyone in here, by default, your, your pipeline does not move to make contact, okay? So if someone responds to an email, the pipeline does not remove to contact by default. Um, now, and that is the stopping clause, 
Okay, the stopping clause on that campaign that's going to automatically stop that campaign is if this pipeline moves to made contact. Now, you guys can adjust this. Okay, so if you want it so that inbound emails will result in a pipeline moving to made contact, you can go up here to your user profile, go to your user preferences. In your CRM settings, you're gonna see there's pipeline settings. So if you want that pipeline to automatically move to make contact through email, you just toggle it to yes and save it. Then anytime a lead is responsive to an email you've sent and if their pipeline is not yet reached made contact, it will then move to made contact at that point. Amazing. I'm going to do it now. Yeah, yeah. because that, that way it will stop automatically to send it to them. And then mm -hmm. we can view it when we do the listing, when we go through them. Okay, good. Yes. Thank you. Yes, not a problem. Not a problem. And then you guys do have um, the same like the non-responsive because these were feature updates um, from the last release. Um, the non-responsive pipeline will automatically trigger um, by by default settings, you can turn that off. So if you guys don't want your pipelines automatically triggering to non-responsive, you want to be the one that changes it to non-responsive, you can turn it off. Um, or you can change how that trigger works. So right now we currently have it set that after 10 combined calls and SMSs, um, it'll move with no contact made yet, um, it'll move to unresponsive. Um, or maybe you consider, you know what, I can send them, you know, 20 text messages, but once I call them 10 times and still haven't made contact with them, that's when I'm going to move them to non-responsive. Um, now, non-responsive doesn't change anything. They're still going to get the listings. They're still going to get everything. It just really um, is a visual thing so that you know, you know what, this is somebody that I can like, easily identify that I've tried them multiple times. It's also utilized now for some of you, the newer users, some of you may want to change this on your system. Um, but the number four, we change it so that it's on non-responsive, okay? So basically once that pipeline moves, so they have to be on non-responsive, you try calling them at least eight times, they've been active in the last 30 days and we call them every seven days in this case. So that's one way of, uh, you know, making sure again, those non-responsive leads, you're still at least giving them an attempt, uh, a communication attempt every seven days, as long as they're active. If you want to do it every seven days, regardless if they're active or not, you can just simply remove this and go apply. And then it would show you anyone, regardless of activity, as long as you've called them at least eight times in that list. Um, so, so Lena, yours is already on the make contact and email. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Um, X and Numa is not changed. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the pin, again, the pin in the text is coming. It's, it's not, they're not replying to the pin. The pin is actually coming from you. <laughs> it's not coming from the lead. So when you're looking at that pin on, on the leads dashboard, it's, it's really, um the system is sending that pin out and you'll see the pin it either fails or delivers or what have you yeah all righty do we have any more questions i feel like you guys are all in here taking her all in does anyone have any questions with respect to save filters things like that any filters that you guys would want to know how to utilize? I know that we are working on an update uh, with respect to our filters. I think that's uh, potentially going to be in our next release. It might be the release after where they're adding a couple more filters, as well as I think they're giving descriptions as well of those filters. So that uh, will be helpful uh, for a lot of individuals. Uh, but as I said, it's, it's something that you want to uh, just play around with, right? So just to kind of see what they do um, on each thing, because again, you can stack those filters, right? To 
create those very specific audiences for yourself in here. But has anyone that's in here, um, I know some people know the filters exist, but still kind of resort to however they choose to follow up with their leads. Um, some people use the filters. Um, they're not always always caught up on their filters, but they, they essentially use them. Um, has anyone in here that's used the filter since they started watching these series or recently that they're finding anything that would be beneficial or any success or how are they finding using those filters for themselves? Um, a lot of it becomes habit ultimately is what I tell everyone. It's all habits. It's just developing those habits and those routines for ourselves uh, when we're jumping into our platforms to keep us on top of, top of everything. Perfect. So Elena's using it. Perfect. So, and you'll you'll start to, and we can look if you don't have Elena. Do you have all these check-in filters in your system? Do they yes. exist? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just noticed them recently because okay. what I do is I use uh, the apply filters, and then I change it because even when you put the apply filter, whatever you have there. And you can change it. You can change the number of everything that mm -hmm. you have there. I use it as a template, uh, mm -hmm. to be honest. I use it as a template. And then I'll change it around, and then I'll just apply filter. But then mm -hmm. I don't update it, so I don't touch it, so I don't ruin it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I do. <laughs> yes, I see a lot of people accidentally update their filters. And like, it's not working. It's like, yeah, because you've got this filter that's going to never, it's preventing it from working right now. <laughs> so... Um, which is easy to do. It's easy to fix. So, so if any of you guys are playing around with filters and you accidentally um, make a mistake with the filters, then we can always fix them for you. Um, awesome. So Martaz is saying, I've started contacting the older leads to find out uh, if they are now ready to, in view of change in the changing market, which is which is good. Yes. Yeah, so finding those older those older contacts. So you guys can do that through registration, okay? So whether it's registration, and then you can choose the specific date. So if it's like all from, you know, X amount of days, older than X amount of days. So I want everyone that's older than, let's say uh, 180 days in here, you can apply that filter, right? And then you can stack it. So now I wanna pull um, whether I wanna do it the people that I haven't contacted. Right, so we can do it by pipeline. So if you're like, I want everyone that I have in contact. So their pipeline status is basically indicating that I've yet to make contact with them. We know that there's 110 of them um, here. A lot of them may not be active. Um, some of them might be active, right? But it's a, it's a great way. But your dialogue when you're talking to them. So sometimes when we're talking to people that we try to contact versus people that we've made contact with, um, it's, you know, how we're talking to them is, is going to slightly differ because we're kind of, you know, we spoke to them before or it's a brand new conversation. Uh, so you can do one and then you could always change it, right? So now I want to take that one um, and move it to all the people that I know I've potentially contacted at some point, whether you want these ones in here um, and then apply that one and it'll kind of go in there. But again, you can do it by activity. You can also just sort this list. So if you feel more comfortable for some of you um, that may be newer to calling leads, uh, it's the last activity. We can see the most recently active lead at the top. Uh, some of you don't really, it doesn't bother you. Um, but again, somebody that may have come onto your website a year ago um, that had intentions of moving within a couple of years, they may not be active all the time, right? So that's also where your check-in filters will work for you as well. Because if you notice in your check-in filters, there's nothing to do with activity, right? We're just checking in on them. If somebody is a six month check-in, the chances of them being active every 30 days isn't always high, but we wanna make sure our voice is still being heard, right? It's that that brand recognition, they're getting the listings, we're gonna introduce our, our voice to these people. Um, Andy is asking, once you filter invalid phone number leads, how do you put them on an invalid phone campaign altogether if I have multiple leads? Great question. All right, so you can, so there's a different way to do it. So you can, um, this is your email only list, right? So if you have the email only list, you have it here. 
Now, what you can also do to make sure that they're not already on the campaign when you go to do this is you go campaign has none. And then you can do the bad number campaign as an example. This would then show you everyone that's not on that campaign already. Okay. Then what you do is you select here and you can select all those leads and then it's a mass action. So you just do apply actions, assign e campaign, and then you would select the bad number campaign and then just go done. And then it'll assign that campaign all simultaneously to 11 leads all at once. And there, so I hope that answers your question, Andy. And you can do that. So this is great as well. Um, if you're ever like doing the, the app downloads, you wanna see everyone that's downloaded the app or add them to the Home Locator app campaign. Um, I have made a short one. Uh, some of you may have that in your system. Uh, anyone that's new to Agent Locator, your campaign is a little bit different. Uh, the beginning, it actually puts them on the Home Locator campaign, but it's a great way to be able to track uh, who's on campaigns, who's not on campaigns, and, and so you can you can see. Um, it's also great when you're wanting to kind of add people to campaigns in groups of individuals. So if you have a campaign that's you know maybe text heavy. Um, if you had, you know, a thousand people and you assign them to that campaign, I can promise you, depending on the questions in your text messages, you are going to get a day where you get inundated with responses all at once. And you may not be in a position that you can necessarily respond to them all at the same time. Um, so that's where you can stagger assigning a campaign by using a filter you know, campaigns has none selected, and then just even going page by page, okay, I'm gonna assign it to these 100 people first, and then give it a go, and then maybe the next day, you assign it to another 100 people and things like that. So, yes, yeah, so Elena's saying the problem with the campaign of the home app is that they need their individual links. Uh, yes, absolutely, and the, uh, the campaign actually has short codes for that. So there's actually a short code in there that automatically produces their unique app link. So you don't have to, to worry about that. Um, so again, in yesterday, yesterday's last week, uh, we were going over email and SMS templates. And if you, whether it's email or SMS, you see that there's a lead mobile app short code. So again, this, when you include it in an SMS or an email is automatically going to produce the link, the URL for that specific one. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you as an example app example. And I'm just going to save that. And then I'm going to send it to you. So you'll see in a, in a message how that works. So if I go text lead. And It's a personal one, right? App example. So you can see it automatically produced my unique app link just by doing that. So it's it's easy to include it. Like you can put it in your um, in your email signature. Like download my app, and I can see for you guys. Let me see. I like to get creative sometimes. So let me see if in an email you can do it through linking. Okay, so I'm just going to go to my email. Actually, I need I need the the app link first. So I can copy it. The short code. That's all I want. So let me just go to the e signature. I'm going to edit the e signature and. Testing, I'm just gonna go to testing link. And I just wanna see if it works for you guys. Or it could be good, because if it does, then you can have a nice image, download code, download, download the app, things like that. Um, so I'm going to link this to this there. All right. So we'll learn something together today if this works. 
So there's that link. Actually, I'm going to have to send this to myself. So let me test app link. And then we'll see together if it actually works. Wait for it to come in. All right. I'll bring this over so we can all see together if it actually works or not. No, it does not. <laughs> it does not work. I wonder if there's a way that we can do it, though. There might be a way. I'll ask our support team because that, I think, would be um, a benefit if, they, if we can get that to work, if you can do that, rather than having to always have here, you know, click here to see the app link, and it automatically clicks it. Um, so I'll see if there's a way that we can we can create that for you guys. Because it was, it was a good idea in theory. I uh, worked for other things. I have other things that do work um, that are similar to that, but for whatever reason, that one did not want to work. Um, yes, yeah, so you can send a mass email to the leads using that short code. Yeah, yeah, and it'll automatically, it'll automatically, because it's a short code, it automatically changes what what it is what the the app link is based on that the account yeah yeah so if i sent it to 500 people for example an email about it every all 500 people would have a different app link because you're using the short code and the app is you know you get everyone's address yeah so as long as the short code is there so as long as you put the short code there then it will then it will work and it will work. Um, but yeah, I'm going to play around with that testing link thing, though, because I feel like uh, that's great because a, a lot of people like visuals, right? Then you guys can use the GIFs that we kind of discussed last session, uh, you know, to download the app, whatever it might be, uh, to encourage people to click on it. Again, if people are downloading that app from you guys, you're getting all their addresses, right? So it's super beneficial um, and gives you that uh, the additional opportunity to convert, right? Getting a uh, a list and a buy from those uh, those specific individuals. Um, any further questions that I can answer for you guys? Like any any struggles that you're having? Again, we're trying to focus more on filters, things like that. Any filters you're looking to target specific audiences, uh, things like that that you're finding in your system like how do i get a hold of like how do i pull up all of these people how do i do this no i'm gonna jump in everyone's crm system here and see how tidy your filters are i promise you guys though use your safe filters Okay, so um, even in the beginning, your number one, like if this is full, like 82 people, I would never say call 82 people, call 20 of them, okay? Um, and then do that every day until you get it at zero and then keep it at zero. And then your number two, again, if you had, you know, a significant amount of people in here, take it in bite-sized pieces, right? So you might wanna do, you know, 40 calls maybe in that one. Um, but again, it's just kind of cycling through, you will get caught up. And then once you get caught up, you'll be laughing um, because it's then just maintenance at that point. Um, if you have a listing and you want to send it to all buyers in one area, how can I promote them? Alrighty, so you do that through your filters. So buying city, buying home type, buying price. So if you have a listing and it is in Toronto, this is an easy example. You apply the filter and it's going to produce to you all the leads where their search criteria indicates that they're looking for a property in Toronto. Okay? They can be looking in additional areas um, like Mississauga as well, um, but they at least have their search targeting Toronto. They're receiving listings for Toronto as part of their, their search. Um, now, if you wanted to get more specific, you can do it by you know the home type. So if you have a condo, for example, you want to only target people that are looking for a condo uh, because that's what your listing is, then you can apply that. Now we can see we've got 21 people. 
Um, if you want to target even further um, and do it by price range, right? So if you want to do it by um, buying price, uh, you do have a couple options. You can do range equal to or greater than, equal to or less than. Um, so let's say you have a, a condo and it's listed at 900,000. Um, so you want everyone that is under, is that the right one? Yeah, under 900,000 or it's under whatever. So if you're, let's say you want everyone that's under 1.5, it's gonna basically probably show up everyone in this list. Oh, no, there's a couple that were looking for luxuries. So these are all the people where their search is indicating that they're priced under 1.5. All right, so you can play around with it or if you just wanna target based on the area, based on, on the type of home, things like that. Um, or if you wanna do price and city, again, it's different creative ways that you can put together those lists. So this is great if you're also doing an open house. Um, yeah, or that new listing, the coming soon, things like that. Some people like targeting the specific areas. Some people just like sending it to everyone, but I can promise you, um, from experience, uh, when you are sending out mass communications, uh, some individuals don't necessarily recognize that it's a mass email. Uh, so they'll be like, why are you sending me properties in Mississauga? I said I was looking for properties in, in Toronto. Uh, so some people will do that. So sometimes narrowing it down is better. Uh, it just depends. It all depends on the audience that you're sending these to as well. Or you send a condo listing to somebody that's looking for a house. They're like, why are you sending me this? I don't want to receive this. Uh, so it's just uh, the more targeted your marketing is, though, the, the more responsive your leads will be towards it. If you're sending first time home buying information to somebody that's looking to downsize and retire, um, that's not the information is not applicable to them. Right. So whereas if you sent it to all your first time buyers, they're going to be your your engagement on that. That communication is going to be a lot higher. At so that then point. basically you check the ones that you want to send it to and then you go to apply action and then you put mass email that's what yeah you do. yeah so if like let's say you wanted to do um you wanted to like you have your first time buyers tagged right um when you have tags here you have any options like so you have selective options here uh does not have selected tags means they don't have any of the tags that you're going to indicate here has any of the selected tags means that you can have five tags listed, but they have to have at least one of them, right? And then they'll populate in the list. Mm -hmm. Has only these selected tags means that if you selected two tags or one tag means they have only that tag. They don't have any additional tags, just that one. And then this one is if they have a tag, but also does not have this tag. So I, let's say I'm looking for, um, my first time buyers that don't have the tag pre-approved, for example, which is, is gonna pull up all your, your ones that you know or potentially have an idea aren't pre-approved yet. Um, so that's what that one is. I like to, I, I tend to navigate or you know, gear to the, the any because it's the safest I find uh, when just doing something general. And then if you were to do first time buyers, gonna select both of them because they're duplicated. Um, but so any of them, so it has to have one of this one or this one, and then you apply it. So this would then give you that list of first time buyers that you have in your system. And then you could then send your mass email from here, right? So you can select them all, send you all your mass email, things like that. All right, so it's, it's, it's a good way to create the different targeting, whether it's investors, retirees, whatever it might be, right? So you can really target uh, depending on what it is that you have, maybe you have a new listing and you know that you want to, you know, reach out to people verbally about it. You can do a poll, pulling it based on, you know, their search criteria is under this amount. Um, I'm going to call all these people and just let them know that I have this listing giving it's coming soon. I want to give you firsthand information before it hits the market, right? So uh, it gives you also reason to talk to people if you haven't talked to them in a while. So those are your tags, so they can. So that's where we also push the tags on you guys to use them. It's a great way to kind of stay on top of your leads and get that quick synopsis as to who somebody is, but it also in scenarios where you need to create specific audiences or reach out to specific individuals, uh, you can do so within seconds, ultimately. Um, so those are your tags. You can also do it by lead types, obviously. So if you guys uh, have lead types, 
uh, which you likely do. So if you wanted to talk, you know, you have, some of you will have seller and home seller, okay? And I think there might, so there might be, I added these ones, uh, maybe buyer is only buyer, okay? But let's say you wanted to just reach out to all potential seller leads. You can just do it through lead type. Uh, then you have all your seller leads in front of you. So whatever it is that you're wanting to communicate with them, whether it's um, adding additional filters, again, to create that specific refined audience, or if it's just generalized information. Uh, so your lead types are essentially, yeah, good for you to be able to also create predefined groups for yourself. And these are all my sellers. These are all my buyers. These are, and, and you can create spinoffs of filters as well. So once you get familiar with them, that's when you start to have like different aha moments and say, okay, you know what? Um, especially if some of you guys may be creating different campaigns um, or running different campaigns, buyers and sellers, and maybe you want to, you know, I'm going to have this list specifically for my sellers and this list is specifically for my buyers. And what I mean by that is if you have your zero cause log as an example, you can add the filter lead type. And let's say I want this as my buyer list. Right? So when you apply it, the lead type of all these leads are now 39 are buyers. You can save this as a, a completely new filter and just add to the end of it, for example, buyers. And you just click create company if you have the opportunity to. If you guys are sub users, you're only going to be able to create personal. Uh, so create company. And then when you see here in the list, I've now got the master list here's my buyers list. And then you can do one for, for sellers. You can even do one for rentals as well. So again, how we're reaching out and the dialogue, we don't have to think about it. We go into like robot, you know, dial, 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 the same, we're going to be saying the same thing, um, generally speaking, or the same introduction, generally speaking, because I'm calling all my buyers right now. And then it's going to switch up when I'm calling all my sellers. And then it's going to switch up when I'm calling all my renters, uh, rental leads. So uh, that's one thing that you could also do. As well, you can also do it based on sources. Uh, so some individuals, uh, you guys might be running Google ads, you might also be running Facebook ads, right? So they didn't sign up on your website, they signed up on, on Facebook, right? So again, the dialogue might switch a little bit. Uh, so you can do the same idea with source. Okay, so anything that we have a source for Facebook, when you're generating leads through Facebook, we always create the Facebook source. So if I wanted to, um, let's just see, I'll see if there's anything in here. Um, this is my Facebook ad. I know now when I'm reaching out to all zero of these people, um, but I know my communication, what I'm saying to them is all going to be the same, right? So it, it just, it just kind of makes it look like you're just, going on cruise control and you're just calling and, and you don't have to keep looking to see the source on each person you're talking to to know what to say. It's like you're calling the same category of lead at that moment. Um, and again, you can create another custom one. So you just change the name, create another custom one, and away you go. You can create spin-offs of the already existing filters in here for you. Anybody else? So many people watching and learning, taking her all in. You guys are going to be expert at this. I expect you, expect you to be experts at this. Get you to be better than I am. That's the goal. We want you better than me. All right. If we don't have any questions left, um, I'm going to wrap this webinar up. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a couple more seconds here to see if there's anything that you want to ask. It won't be hard to beat me. You just got to use it. <laughs> if you use it, you do it. And half the time, I don't even use it for your guys' purposes, right? I'm training the basics for most people. So, um, yeah, so once you start doing it, you will become fluent, I promise you. The more you use it, you touch it every day, you will become fluent in here and just expand your knowledge. You know, if you don't know what something is, click it, see what it does. Right? Go through the different tutorials on the training site, just expand your knowledge. Um, but it's, it, it becomes ha like, it's just habits. And even then I still have to backtrack. So 
sometimes. <laughs> so if I'm creating a Facebook campaign, for example, or integration for someone because I'm not doing it all the time, I'm like, shoot, I got to go back and I got to do this, right? So if I was doing it con consistently, it becomes basically a routine. Okay, you got to do this, got to create the source, got to create the campaign, got to sign the campaign, got to do this, do this, this. Like, it's just a process, right? But it becomes um, imprinted in your brains. Uh, so again, just, just keep using it. I promise you, you will get better the more and more you use it and do your best to log in every single day. If you only have 10 minutes, then use that 10 minutes and call five to 10 leads in that 10 minutes. Okay. So, you know, something is better than nothing. It prevents you from getting, you know, that much further behind and, you know, once you're staying on top of those leads, then, then that's where you're going to start to really recognize the results from all your efforts. And, and it's hard in the beginning. I, I understand that because we're not always seeing the reward for our efforts right away. Uh, but as long as you stick to it, you will start to see those results. It's like going to the gym, right? I went to the gym one time. You're not going to see the results. <laughs> You have to keep going and keep going and keep showing up. And then you start to gradually recognize the results of your efforts. It's not a simple, quick fix and change uh, of things. And your system is going to be exactly the same. You're going to, you're going to start to see that. Uh, focus on having good conversations with people. That's it. And uh, you'll start to see the, the trees producing fruit for you to harvest. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for hopping on today. If you guys have any questions or uh, need assistance with respect to your specific system, just reach out. Um, uh, yes, you will have a recording, Irvin. And uh, if you, if, yeah, if you need anything, just just let me know. I like to, you know, I love going through and dissecting people's systems, and you know, I always break it down. So there's short short sessions, and I always give you homework, which it's a little bit of accountability, uh, but if anyone is interested in that, uh, especially like just with the, the sense of the filters, it's just going over those filters and creating those habits for you so that you uh, find the most and the best results of your, your platform here with us. Uh, you're most welcome, everyone, and we will see you all next Thursday. Until then.